Hi counselors, welcome to another video from Counselor's Tips. Today I am covering what a session using solution focus theory could look like. Because I'm a licensed counselor, I can't necessarily record a client session. So you'll be seeing me and another version of me. Hopefully the way that I designed this video, you'll be able to tell the difference between the counselor, me, in the black shirt and the client in the red shirt. So hang in there. I'm gonna show you multiple uses and different techniques of solution focused theory. So on a scale from zero to 10, zero being not at all and 10 being completely so, where would you rate your level of frustration around your parenting skills? Oh, today I would rate my level of frustration around my parenting skills at an eight. Oh, an eight. Okay. So what do you think would take you from an eight to a seven? I think if I talked through just what's available to me um, <clears throat> as a parent, uh, maybe I could find just a little bit of relief and I would feel a seven. So tell me about your parenting experience from your perception. You know, sometimes I just really struggle with um, parenting. Being a parent from my perception is um, tremendously difficult. Um, I just feel like, um, you know, I have a couple of kids and we had them close together and I just feel like I don't have enough time to do everything I need to do professionally um, and personally or with my even, you know, with my husband. Um, and, you know, sometimes I just want more than occasional breaks. So what I hear you saying is that you feel like you're not supported. Who are your supports? Um, you know, I have, I am married and I have help from my spouse and, um, I have help from my mom, um, and sometimes my dad and, um, you know, my friends are always willing to help. I also hear you saying that you feel frustrated at times and it sounds like that you're looking for a break. Yeah, that's right. I, I do need the breaks um, that people give me. I, I, I do feel frustrated at points um, because I just feel like, you know, as a parent, I, I should be happy and joyful all the time. And, um, you know, that, that my kids, um, you know, are just being kids and, uh, you know, I, I really shouldn't be feeling like um, just frustrated at taking care of them. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm just not a good parent. Has anyone said to you that being frustrated is directly related to poor parenting? <laughs> no. Um, no one's ever said to me being frustrated. Uh, is part of being a poor parent or a bad parent. Um, as a matter of fact, um, you know, my mom, uh, who obviously was a parent and, uh, my friends, um, talk about how, uh, frustrating sometimes it is to be a parent. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't, I guess it's not related to, um, my parenting skills. No. Mm-hmm. You know, with these occasional breaks, um, I, I want them when I ask for them, uh, not just when people offer. Um, <clears throat> sometimes I feel like um, I just can't even ask for help. Um, 
that I'm really not going to get a good response from people. Who are your supports? Um, my supports, uh, like I identified earlier, would be my spouse and, you know, mainly my mom. And then I have uh, two close friends that um, will um, sometimes trade off uh, keeping each other's kids. Um, and my kids are um, in kindergarten and in second grade, so there's not too many play dates yet. So I can't say like other kids' parents are a support. So I do have a few, I do have a few supports. Um, and I guess that's better than most people. Some people have none. So I hear you saying that oftentimes you feel like you're by yourself, even though you have the help of your mom and your friends in the times that you are parenting. I also hear you saying that your spouse is really supportive. You know, my spouse will frequently, um, I guess, recognize that I need a break and <clears throat> you know, make suggestions that uh, I go out with my friends um, or I go to an exercise class, um, go read a book, even if it's I'm not leaving the house. And I guess it's just that um, I go and have some time to myself. So if your friends were here listening to what you're sharing with me, what do you think their perceptions would be on what you're saying about your parenting style? My friends frequently say to me that I'm a great parent and that, you know, I'm available, um, you know, emotionally available and supportive to my kids, um, that I have given them lots of activities that really make them well-rounded. You know, they're involved in a sports activity and some kind of creative activity. Um, they get to uh, do that a couple times a year, you know, so uh, let's say if they're in a sports activity, they would be in soccer in the spring and soccer in the fall and um, maybe take swimming in the summer. Um, you know, uh, my one kid is involved in dance um, and the other uh, is gotten into um, a crafting class and is really liking that. So, um, you know, my friends say frequently, like, my kids are up here really happy and pretty grounded and, uh, you know, it looks like they really trust me. You know, but even though my friends say that um, my kids appear really happy, you know, they're, they're not at my house all the time and they don't see my kids acting out and, um, you know, like, whining to get their own way, um, you know, sometimes getting in between... Uh, my husband and I, and, you know, that causes strain and stress on our marriage. Um, so, you know, just, you know, like sometimes the kid's behavior is uh, difficult. Um, and I just feel sometimes exasperated. I can hear your perception on your kids and how sometimes that impacts your feelings. I can understand why you oftentimes feel frustrated in your parenting endeavors. It sounds like sometimes you really feel overwhelmed. What do you think gives you hope that this problem actually can be solved? Gosh, that's a great question. Um, I suppose, you know, one thing is that uh, the older they get, the easier it is, uh, you know, the better they listen, they're more able to communicate, uh, there's less whining, um, maybe they follow directions better. So I guess one thing that gives me hope is that it's getting better as they get older. Um, and that's what kids do. They're just going to keep getting older. So I guess I, you know, could always look at that. Um, yeah, that things could get better as they get older. When things would be going better, what do you think your spouse would notice that would be different about you? I think my spouse would notice that <clears throat> maybe I would complain less or maybe not be so tense or I'm tired. I think maybe I appear exhausted all the time. So maybe I would appear relieved, not just physically, but also verbally. What do you think that your spouse would notice 
about you that would tell them that the problems are gone and you're no longer overwhelmed and frustrated. Um, I think my spouse would notice maybe a more playful attitude um, with me, maybe, uh, you know, be more free and joking and, and laughing, um, you know, more like it was when, when we were um, first married and, and before we had kids. What do you think it's going to take to make things feel even a little bit better? Wow, so a little bit better. Um, I think it, it might help me if we created a schedule and um, that include the kids' schedule and that uh, maybe my husband and I rotate um, who is taking who to what activity or person's house and um, maybe the schedule includes like nights he does stuff or nights I do stuff or um, I think definitely scheduling a date night would help us. Yeah. I see. So I hear that you would like some positive support from your husband. Uh, yeah. Positive support, support from my husband. Yeah, that would, that would be, that would be great. Of course, I, I probably have to tell him or ask him. So if your spouse was here right now, what do you think we could say to him that would make him just a little bit less critical? Oh, well, definitely he would say that um, I haven't spoken up, um, and that uh, he probably would say, and rightly so, that he can't read my mind. Um, and, um, you know, he would say, I think also, like, uh, he has offered help, but I haven't taken him up on it. What do you think he would say in response to your perceptions? Well... I think he would say that, um, of course I've been overwhelmed because I've been trying to do everything myself and that, uh, the kids are just being kids and my frustration comes from trying to do everything myself. What do you think you have found that would make this situation more manageable? Well, definitely from talking to you today, I think creating a schedule, um, uh, relating to my spouse, meaning like, you know, we design a schedule together, um, look at what he's got to do and what I want to do and what the kids have been scheduled to do and, uh, making our relationship a priority and having a date night and, um, <clears throat> asking for help, receiving help. That would be another one, receiving help. Um, and, um, using our support network, um, you know, because I would say that we we have uh, <clears throat> we have uh, you know four people that regularly would help us. Yeah, so we don't have to use the same person every week. Um, but I mean, gosh, it, that could be like one person a week. Well, considering how overwhelmed and frustrated you stated you've been, you have also noted that you have had great experiences with your kids and that you feel very fulfilled as a parent. You know, so I guess maybe it's really not my kids that are as much as a problem as it sounds like I am. I mean, I really enjoy being a mom and them being in my life has really enhanced my life and been a, a very joyful part of our marriage. Um, yeah, so I think uh, it sounds like a lot of the problems I have are really me. What are times that make you change your opinion from feeling overwhelmed and frustrated to being proud and enjoying parenting? So times that I've not felt overwhelmed and frustrated and enjoyed being a parent, um, you know, have been... Uh, you know, family vacations, um, uh, watching my kids, um, 
achieve um, mastery of tasks that they're um, undertaking, you know, uh, getting better at a sport or finding something they're interested in and excelling at it. And, you know, they're smiling and laughing and having a good time. So feeling at ease and less frustrated while parenting was one of your goals. What are some things that we've already done that have helped you work towards this goal up until now? Yeah, getting clarification that, um, you know, I have some ideas and things that are already in place that I just haven't been using um, makes me feel more at ease. You know, all I have to do is pick up and, and use the things that are there for me. Um, yeah, I think asking for help and receiving help uh, would definitely reduce my frustration um, around parenting my kids. Wow, in your sharing, I hear that you have multiple strengths as a parent. You said that you ask for help when you need it, you take breaks frequently, that you make sure you have a solid social support network, that you are involved in your own activities, so when you came in today and we scaled you on your level of frustration at your parenting ability with your children, you said that you would give yourself an eight. What do you think the most important thing you have to do to keep your score at a seven instead of an eight? I would have to be available to listening to um maybe what you can offer as far as solutions in today's session and um, not just, you know, hearing them here in the session, but taking them home and remembering them. Yeah, that, that might keep me at a seven. Yeah, seven would be better than eight. So I want you to imagine a time in the future where you aren't frustrated or overwhelmed being a parent. Okay, let's say that all the present obstacles and things that overwhelm you and frustrated you are completely gone. Okay. So when this happens, what will be different and tell you that this positive future has actually happened? Well, I was envisioning that uh, my kids would be more independent and um, I was envisioning that um, I'd be part of a parent group where we could, um, you know, their friends would be involved in similar activities and we could rotate responsibilities of um, maybe, you know, parents um, carpooling kids. Um, so yeah, my kids being more independent, maybe even being able to ride their bikes to activities, uh, you know, because they, they would need to be older, um, where I would feel that they were safer uh, doing that. But yeah, even just carpooling, parents carpooling kids that, yeah, that that would give me more space and more time or, or, or even the scheduling, you know, with my husband. Yeah, that that would be great. What is the most important thing you're taking away from this session today that you can do once you leave here? Yeah, the most important thing I'm taking away from today's session is that I need to ask and receive help. Um, and I need to, you know, really stop thinking I can do this all by myself. I mean, for goodness sakes, I'm only half of the parent team with my kids. Um, and I have a lot of love and support that I was overlooking. Even though this was a brief video showing you how to apply the different techniques of solution-focused therapy, I believe that by watching this video, it has given you the ability to have more clarity on how to put the techniques of solution-focused therapy into action while with a client. Thank you for joining me for this video. If you found this video to be helpful, please consider giving it a like. If you enjoyed learning from this video and would like to continue to learn, 
from Counselor Tips, please consider subscribing to this channel and turn on the bell. That way you know when I have a new video. See you soon.